Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into OTRAM's YouTube channel. Um, today we've got a 2000 Land Cruiser with a 47 V8. Um, we're going to do a timing belt water pump job on it. Uh, we're going to split this one into two parts since my videos lately have been turning out really long. So we're going to do one video on the teardown and then a second video on reassembly. Uh, so let me get the camera set back up where you can see under there better and we'll start shooting video. Uh, we're going to try something a little different this time. I got a head mounted little camera so hopefully we can splice some of that footage in so that you can actually see better what I'm looking at and what I'm doing. So let me get you readjusted and we'll be back. Okay so we're up here on top of the truck. Normally our first step would be to uh, remove the lower skid plate and drain the coolant. Um, we've already done that. So we can get under here and take this uh, sight shield off first. And it's just two 10 millimeter bolts here at the front. And two 10 millimeter nuts at the back. And this one doesn't have it, but a lot of times back here, the one of the fuel hoses is clipped on the back. So just watch out when you're removing it that you don't pull the fuel, fuel hose loose. So we can take that off. We can set it over here to the side. And then we can take the air box loose. So we'll just unclip the mass airflow sensor unclip the air box itself, loosen up this 10 millimeter nut here, or clamp rather, and then there's a couple of vacuum hoses attached. Uh, be careful, they're usually pretty brittle by this point. Uh, not usually the hoses, but the fittings themselves on the box. So it helps sometimes to give them a little twist as you pull them off. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt on the outside edge right here. And then the one at the back, well there should be one at the back here, but it's missing on this truck. Then you can wiggle that. over to the side. And then we can take our upper radiator hose off. So grab our hose clamp pliers. Slide the clamp back. Same thing over here. take a magic marker and mark the radiator end of the hose uh, just so it's easier for me to remember which way it came off. And we'll take our hose pick work the hose loose and we'll do that at both ends And 
set it over to the side. And we'll walk over here to the toolbox because I did not get out all my tools. And we'll get out a 12. And now we can take the brackets loose of the radiator here. There's a AC crossover pipe and then the upper brackets for the fan shroud. There's two of those on each side and they're 12 millimeter. This one, the upper tab on the fan shroud's broken, which is fairly common to find. And then there's two more 12s that hold the radiator overflow bottle on. We'll take those off. Take this wire clip, unclip it, and take the radiator overflow loose of the radiator neck. Set that off the side. And now the fan shroud's loose, so we can pop the uh, fan itself off. I like to use these really long uh, long wrenches to get in here and pop the uh, fan clutch nuts loose. And I didn't grab a pry bar yet. And you can just stick a pry bar down next to one of the nuts that's still tight so that you can work the others loose. And just work your way around. One more to go. Our last 
fan hub nut. And then you can just kind of get in there and just rock it back and forth. And it'll slowly work off the hub there until it's loose. And then I just gently push these lines back and you can lift up. Oop, and I forgot one, one of the shroud bolts. You know, it felt like I was forgetting one. There's one down here behind the bottom of the overflow bottle. There we go. And then you can lift the fan and the shroud out as a set. give those to our beautiful assistant crash. And then we can kind of flex these back out of the way. Get your better luck in there. And we can take a 14 and loosen up the uh, serpentine belt. And we'll get that out of our way. We can also take off the fan pulley. There we go. We can go put this stuff aside. Okay, now we can get the thermostat housing out of our way. It never fails that this clamp is right in the way. It also never fails that I drop all my tools. Let's try that again. There we go. Just kind of tuck that off to the side. Pull the thermostat out, and we're going to lose a little bit of coolant out of there. Now we can come take this upper housing off. Actually, I'm going to take this idler pulley off first just to get better access to that clamp. I take the pulleys off I like to leave the bolts in them that way I know which one's which we can take the idler or the tensioner pulley off while we're here too this one is reverse thread so you turn it clockwise to loosen it
drop that one too. I was trying to point out that while you've got all the pulleys off, it's good to listen to them to see if they're making any noise. This one sounds pretty decent, so we'll put it off to the side. Now we can come back up here and get this clamp off this coolant pipe. And it goes to this whole line that's coming down right here. So while we're undoing that one, we'll undo the clamp down here at the oil cooler. Slide it back. And then there's one that comes off the pipe and snakes around up here to the throttle body. So we'll go ahead and slide that clamp back as well. I'm actually gonna pull this hose off. Well, there we go. You don't have to pull this one off. I just want to get a little bit ac better access into this one. really come off. So we'll pull the other end loose first and that'll make it easier to wiggle. So let me swap bits here. I just had, there it is. So this cooling pipe is held on by a 10 millimeter nut that's kind of hanging out here behind the cam position sensor plug. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt down here at the bottom. Take that loose. And when you are wiggling this out, watch out. It likes to hang up on the cam sensor plug. So we'll set that aside. Let me grab a set of pliers and we'll try to wiggle those lines loose. Go. We're just going to gently rock all these to break them loose. You don't want to pinch too tightly or you'll crush the, the pipes that they're hooked to. And when you take this loose, it's gonna dump coolant. Come on. There's that one. The upper one. Fish that out of there. If you're doing this at home, you'll want a drain pan down uh, since this is just shop floor and we'll mop when we're done. I'm not too concerned about dumping coolant. But yeah, it's going to drain quite a bit once we pull this pipe off. Now, usually it does. That one's not dumping much. So we'll set this off to the side. And we'll grab a 12 and an extension. Let me reset my creeper. Now we can take this upper housing off. It's just these two 12 millimeter bolts here. Loosen those up. Take these out. And then you just kind of rock and wiggle.
tip this guy off. Sometimes they're stuck and it helps to spray a little penetrating oil uh, down along that O-ring. Shoot a little bit back there. There we go. And you can see it's just a gasketed glued joint here. Um, and I used the, the Toyota branded sealer for there. There's two different kinds. The earlier 4.7s used the cheap uh, form of gasket. <coughs> and then it's 04, 05 and up. The ones that use the pink uh, super long life antifreeze actually use a different sealer here the pink antifreeze will eat the old style uh, gasket maker. So we can set this guy out to the side and we'll scrape that and clean it up in a little bit. Now we can come back over here and we can start taking cam covers off. And there's a couple of 10 millimeter bolts around the outside here. There's one, yeah, right down here. And then this closed end nut. And a lot of times, instead of the nut coming loose off of this stud, it'll spin the whole stud out of the head. So this whole piece ends up coming out with it, which is kind of a pain. I just put my bolts in the cover so I know which bolts go with which cover. Um, they're the same, it just helps me keep track of everything. And then we're going to unplug this guy. We're going to unplug the cam sensor. We're going to unhook it from its little hook and pull the grommet off. Set that aside. We're also going to undo the AC compressor plug just to give us a little more room to play with. And same as the other side, we can just start taking bolts loose. here under the water neck. There we go. And on this side, we've already taken the nut loose because it was holding that, uh, that water pipe on. Just 
snake the snake the cover out of there. And you've got to be careful because you've got to fish the uh, cam sensor plug through as you do it. And we'll put these bolts in here and set this off to the side. Okay, so now we can see our cams. Um, and we can just tuck this guy back here, out of the way. Um, I like to take both cam covers off and then work down the passenger side and then work down the driver's side as I'm taking it apart. Um, it doesn't really make a difference either way. Uh, just that's the way it's easiest for me to keep track of what I've done. So now that we've got the cam cover off, we can take the power steering pump loose. And it's just three 14 millimeter headed bolts. And you just reach in, there's access holes through the power steering pulley to get them. set these bolts off to the side and I'll normally make a pile for passenger side bolts on one side of my cart, driver side bolts on the other side, just keep them separate. Uh, we just let the pa power steering pump float there. Um, we need to disconnect the battery. We should have done that first and I forgot. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Next, we're going to undo the alternator down here, and although the back of the alternator stud is shielded, on the odd chance that for some reason it's uh, broken off, we don't want that to be able to hit anything. Actually, before we take the alternator loose, I'm going to take the tensioner in this front cover loose. Okay, so we can go ahead and start taking this center timing belt cover off and it's just these two really long 12 millimeter bolts here increasing parts pile. And we'll come down here and grab the tensioner bolts. Or the nuts rather. that back in because it started to thread itself out. Set 
those off to the side. And then the other tensioner mount is actually behind the alternator mount here. But there's also a 12 hanging out here that will undo. over to a 14 and then down underneath the alternator there's another 14 so we'll undo that And then we can kind of just hold the power steering pump out of the way and wiggle the alternator forwards. It'll just slide off this stud and then we can just set it back down to the side and then the tensioner will come off that same stud. So that's everything down off of the passenger side. And now we can deal, we can move over here. We need to take this fan bracket off. Um, the fan bracket is, it's just a couple volts from the front, but the AC compressor bolts go through it sideways and there's a pin, like a sleeve here, holding it. So we've got to take the front two AC compressor bolts out, and there's a third one in the back. And the third one is absolutely terrible to take in and out. Um, so we're not going to actually take it all the way out, we're just going to loosen it. And if you put an extension about that size, about that angle, you can come down here, kind of right behind the oil dip stick, and fish down there, and you can catch that bolt. And there it is. And we're just gonna loosen it up. And I'm going the wrong way. I'm gonna try this. We're just gonna loosen it up. Um, we want it just enough that we can like pivot the air compressor to get it free of the uh, fan bracket. So there we go. Um, that'll give us enough play there. And then we can switch up the other 14. Actually, I'm going to swap to a shorter. We'll go to a shallow 14. So we'll grab a shallow 14, and the other one is right here. You can't really see it, you just gotta kinda feel for it. It's, uh, disturbingly, this one's already loose. That's, uh, it's kinda scary. loose enough to run out by our fingers.
go. And that one will just snake out between the uh, the air compressor or the AC compressor and the frame. So we're going to stick that in its own separate pile off to this side so we can keep the passenger side and driver side bolts separate. And then there's a lower bolt that's easier to get from underneath. And for that one, we're going to use a long extension and a swivel 14. And if you look up here right behind the oil filter, there's a bracket here. So we're going to stick our socket on there and just rest in the crook of the frame. Whew. And somebody really tightened that one on there. I guess they're making up for the top one being loose. So we got the little bolt that holds that bracket on, and then and a little bit further is the actual compressor bracket, or the compressor bolt. And I don't know if you guys can see it up there, but again we'll put the swivel on there. And there's your bolt and your bracket. And that guy was sitting in there like that. So we'll come put these off to the side. Now we can take that compressor bracket off the front. And there's two. 14 headed fasteners, one down here at the bottom of the fan bracket, and it's a long bolt, and then over here by the AC compressor switch is the other 14, which was already finger tight. So apparently the last guy in here didn't have a torque wrench. And I usually stick these together just so they stay together. I know those are fan bracket bolts. And then there's a 12 millimeter right up here. another long bolt and then a nut that goes with it right here under the water neck and that is not the right nut that's supposed to be flanged so we'll replace that with a flanged one when we go back and then if you come down here there's a little metal tab on the AC compressor if you just kind of bend that out of the way it makes it easier go and take the fan bracket off and these are fairly common to go bad so you want to give them a good shake and spin them around listen for noise because uh, it would uh, be pretty bad to get all the way done and then have that guy making noise <coughs> excuse me 
So now we're down to the actual timing belt and we're gonna need to start setting this to top dead center and getting it ready to take the belt off. Um, the different generations of the 4.7, where you set the crank for timing belt removal changes. Some of them are before top dead center, some of them are at zero top dead center, and some of them are after top dead center. I've never figured out what the rhyme or reason is, so I just check the, uh, the manual each time for whichever year I'm working on. So let me go check the manual and I'll be right back. Okay, so I checked the manual and this is one of them that gets set to uh, 50 degrees after top dead center. But before we set that, first we're going to uh, loosen the crank pulley bolt uh, so that we don't have to be wrenching on that after we've set where we want our timing to stay. So we're going to use a crank, uh, crank pulley holder which just bolts onto the front of the crank with these two bolts. So there's two threaded holes in the front of the crank, or the crank pulley rather. And I thought, yeah, there's one. For some reason, my bolt won't go in. Okay, so it turned out there was a lot of rust and crust in uh, in the holes in the front of the crank. So I ended up having to take a tap and uh, clean out the threads. They're uh, eight millimeter by one two five thread. Um, so we've got the crank holder bolted on there now. Now, ooh, go ahead and loosen that bolt up. Puller off. Now, according to the instructions, we're going to go 50 degrees after top dead center. So, zero mark. Well, I don't pass it, but it's okay. Um, so to make sure you're on top dead center number one, when you're at the zero mark here, you can look at your two belt pulleys and make sure that they line up with their marks, and they actually do. We hit this one right the first time. Uh, if they don't, you go another 360 degrees on the crank pulley till it comes back to zero, and then those line up. And then to go 50 degrees before or after top dead center like they want, we're going to put the timer timing mark in line with the center of this pulley over here. And then that's our location for belt removal. And then just a quick jerk backwards on that bolt. We'll loosen it up usually. Take the crank bolt out. And yeah, we're going to get lucky. We can just wiggle the damper pulley off. So now that's out of our way. And then we can go ahead and take the uh, that last pulley cover off. And there's a bolt hidden way back in there. And there's one off to the side over here. And 
one over here. on the very bottom. There we go. And we can just wiggle that off. They've got little pins that correspond to some of these holes, like this one here, that center it. We'll set this guy off to the side. We can take our crank trigger pulley off. Be real careful with this. The, uh, the teeth are pretty fragile, and if you mess up the teeth, you'll get a misfire. So we'll set that to the side. We'll grab 12 millimeter again. And we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, hydraulic tensioner off. And there's these two bolts that are mounted vertically that hold the tensioner in. And you just wanna loosen them evenly so the tensioner doesn't cock as it's coming out. Um, a lot of people don't replace the tensioner uh, while they're in here. You know, it's a hydraulic part and, you know, they're prone to leaking. It's not that much more expensive to, you know, buy the kit that has the tensioner in it. So I always replace the tensioner and all the pulleys and the water pump while I'm in here. Um, just because I don't want to have to come back in here again because something leaked. So there's our hydraulic tensioner. So we can take this guy and set it off to the side. And then we can just wiggle our belt off of here. And the uh, pulleys will tend to move some as you're taking the belt off. And we'll just fish it out of here. Again, watch that cam sensor plug. Fish it off underneath. There we go. There's our belt out. Go ahead and take this one idler pulley off. There we go. And again, leave the bolt in the pulley so we know which one's which. And I know I got it out. There it is. The uh, tensioner pulley is a 10 millimeter hex key. We'll take that out. There we go. And there's a washer on the back. Make sure you don't lose the washer. And set that off to the side. And now is a good time to check out our cam seals. I don't know if you guys can see in there or not. We're going to look in the cam seals, make sure they're dry, because now would be the time to change them if they're leaking. These are both dry. And they're both dry down below them and then we'll check our lower oil seal 
it looks good as well. It looks like somebody changed these the last time they were in there. So we're going to leave those be. Uh, and now we can get ready to start taking the water pump out. You take this little triangle out. Make sure you put this triangle back in. Uh, if you don't, mice will climb down in there and go through your timing belt and make you jump time. Uh, it happens more often uh, than you would think. Let me grab a deep socket. And we can start taking the uh, water pump off. This one, all the bolts are the same, but as a matter of practice, I like to take my old water or my new water pump and set it up near where I'm working. And then as I take my pump bolts out, I can take my pump bolts out and put them in the corresponding holes of the new water pump. And then once I get the, the old water pump off, I'll transfer them hole for hole uh, over to the new one. It's just makes me, it lets you make sure that you've A, got all the bolts out, um, and sometimes they are different lengths, so if you keep track of which hole they came out of, it makes it a lot easier to, to put them back. One of them is a nut, this guy over here. And one more right there. The rest of these are through bolts from the other covers. So we can go ahead and put this back over here for now. Because we're not going to need all those bolts for a while. Now, we'll just pull the water pump off. And again, we're going to dump a lot of coolant. Oh, that's a lot more than I thought. Uh, we'll come back and mop that up later. And you can see there's a there's an o-ring here that fits in the back of the water pump bore here. A lot of times that'll get stuck, um, and you'll just have to keep rocking and fighting and rocking and fighting. This one actually came off really easy, and the gasket came off with the pump, um, which was nice. And the kit comes with a new o-ring for here and a new o-ring for here. Don't forget to put them on. Uh, I'm gonna let this drip dry and I'm gonna clean up the, the water pump gasket mounting surface. Um, and I'll let you guys go do something else while I'm doing that, because it's uh, slow and boring. But let me get all my parts cleaned up, and then we'll come back in part two uh, to do reassembly. So I will see you shortly, thanks.